Hello. Hello. Good evening. We're looking at a cat, uh, which is appropriate because last week or last time we played, Ian's met somebody who is being followed by cats and complaining about it. Um, Automatically distrust him. <laughs> ran down the uh, disgraced archaeologist uh, Van Hoevelen, who was let go from the current uh, the current expedition to uh, to Egypt. The current one spec uh, current one sponsored by the Penhu Foundation. He gave you his complaints about having been let go from the Clive expedition, and told you that in an effort to get himself reinstated, he tracked down an artifact of his own, a manuscript that he found from a weird temple in a, in a mostly empty section of Cairo. Uh, James sat down with a man and went over his, uh, his translation, found some places that Van Hoeven had made uh, errors in his translation of the ancient manuscript, you smoothed things over, but you did kind of tick the man off when you corrected him. Uh, the entire time, cats kept coming into his apartment. Uh, he would periodically throw empty liquor bottles at them to get them to go away. And at the end of the session, as you left, Birdie had been holding a cat. It had been perched on her shoulder for most of the conversation. When you left the man's apartment, the cat jumped down from Birdie's shoulder ran across the busy street you caught sight of a beautiful young woman that had approached and jumped on her shoulder and then she disappeared sounds like pretty normal cat owner things <laughs> yeah so as we begin why don't we go with uh with joey yeah Introductions. Yes. Oh so, yeah. Uh, hi, I am Joey. I am playing Connor Leon and uh, Jean. Right, Jean. Jean Guillory. I forgot his name. Yeah. Uh, Jean, Jean is Guillory. Kind of a communal character. Whoever is. Yeah. Whoever needs somebody. Yeah. And then, Bry. Hi. I'm Bry, and I'm going to be playing Birdie for this handsome young man here, who's uh, who who is very proud to be the star of the show tonight. <laughs> Go ahead and introduce him. This is Kiddo. I pulled him out of a dumpster about six years ago, and he's never let me forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Terry? I am Terry. I play as James. I am the nerd of the group. Uh, knowing... Just knowing a lot of information. Being able to also be the medic. Patching up Victor most of the time. And yeah. That's a good way to leave us to Travis. Um, I'm not sure who I'm playing tonight. Uh, I haven't really... I don't know what's happening. We will start with Victor. Okay, then I'll be playing Victor. Um, overprotective father and crazy man. Action hero extraordinaire. You have proven to be an action hero a couple of times. So I can't take that away from you. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Uh... You spend a long time with Van Hoeven going over that manuscript. So pretty much it's going to be the evening. Uh, unless you have something you want to begin to do immediately, we can jump to the next morning. Where I was going to distract him so that the other two could steal the manuscript. <laughs> Well, that's where I was going. Do you want to distract yep. him that evening, or do you want to do something the next day? I 
I think I arranged to meet with him the next morning, didn't I? I believe you might have. I, I, I think that's what it was. Um... Do, do one of our three other intrepid heroes wish to uh, accompany me while I insist this guy gives us a tour of all the things we've already seen? Or do all three of you want to work on uh, um, robbing him? I'll work on robbing him. <laughs> <clears throat> you don't want to hear his bad takes on local culture? No. <laughs> well, no, then... with uh, how he went about on uh, deciphering. Yeah, it's probably going to be really bad. Uh... Considering that Van Heuvelen is a uh, pretty unprofessional drunkard, and that yeah. Bernie is incredibly charming, if you want to, we can just assume that you keep him busy as long as you want. You can play Jean. Oh lord. <laughs> uh, if that appeals to you. I don't know that I can play John. Okay. Could I play a cat? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the cats are uh, not currently under your control. They are free agents. Unfortunately. The, assuming any cat is under anyone's control at any moment. Okay. No, we're just under the cat's controls. Correct. I mean, look at this. <laughs> so, in the morning, um, the group of you can head back to the street of... Uh, street of Street of Scorpions. Um, Birdie, you can go in. I'm afraid that Van Hoyland is going to be uh, passed out and hungover. But you're a resourceful gal. I will spend a few minutes charming the shopkeep first. Okay. Um, Just laying some groundwork for the other three. Okay, so you want to uh, you want to lay the groundwork for them to be allowed into this man's apartment without his permission. Yes. Okay. Yes, I do. Are we using money, or what tactics are you applying to this situation? Charm and money. Okay. Uh, to be honest, he wants the man gone. He's sick of Van, Hoyle, Van Hoyvelen's crap and these cats following him around as the last straw. So it doesn't take much, but uh, he is going to require you to promise that you will uh, you'll get this guy out. Hmm? <laughs> hey guys, how do you feel about moving all of his crap out of the apartment while we're gone? <laughs> Impromptu eviction. <laughs> if they let you want to work on that while I go and get all the uh, all of his paper and all that all the, the scrolls you did hire a very large man you might as well put him to work yeah, yeah. so who am I with by the way uh well Birdie is making arrangements with the shopkeeper for the group of you in her absence, to act as uh, as agents of the landlord. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Birdie, you'll have to you'll have to splash him on the face, remind him that you have an appointment today, but eventually he will come around uh, and head out to show you the pyramids. Okay. I'm I'm going to uh, attempt to charm another one of the cats that's undoubtedly following him to sit on my shoulder again. Okay. Yeah. That and I'm just going. 
And I'm going to whisper to the cat, we're gonna we're gonna be taking care of everything, don't you worry. <clears throat> I'm sorry, do I know what's because... happening with these cats at all? I wasn't here the last time. Uh there are just cats like following this guy around. After he broke into a temple and stole uh, a manuscript. Can I from it. can I uh, a call or it's it's very important to note that the temple was a temple to Bast. Yes. <laughs> you don't need to roll anything here. There he has clearly offended the cat goddess. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can explain anything that you're uncertain of in character. Uh, like why so there are cats. You can wait until Birdie has uh has disappeared some way down the street. Mm -hmm. And then uh, she's already, I'm sure she stepped out to let you know she made arrangements with the shopkeeper for you to go in the mm -hmm. apartment as long as you clear it out for, for him. Oh yeah, but before yep. I even wake the guy up, um, y'all have free reign to move whatever you want out of there. As a matter of fact, he's gonna let you move everything out of there. Whether you take it to a local hotel to set him up in, or just leave it out on the street, is up to you. <laughs> then I'll go wake him up. Alright. So are we gonna pull a horrible prank on this man? that up to those who are staying behind to work uh yeah i'm going to just drop jean on the screen you can control him or not at your uh, at my at leisure preference. yes okay but uh victor you'll be there james and connor obviously there you have been given a task it is up to you how you fulfill it what's my task <laughs> Your task is uh, acting as a mover. Getting rid of uh, his shit. It is also up to us if we just want to leave it outside or if we want to go and set him up into a different hotel. Well, I'm going to let someone else choose what's happening with that. Uh, you would have heard from them that there's some sort of ancient manuscript in here. And that is my goal I'm looking for. Yep. Either way, I am fine with either the decisions. Um, I guess this is now... <laughs> hey, Connor, uh -huh. do you want to kick a man out onto the street, or do you want to move him into a hotel? How do you feel? <laughs> uh, Joey, you are muted. You're muted, I think Joey. You're muted. Oh, you're muted. I am. I am. <laughs> Did we uh, get all of the information out of him? Uh, we, we, we got info out of him. Uh, I set it up with the landlord so that you guys can go into his apartment and have free reign as long as you move all of his crap out. The only Which other means information that, we that you can have. leave his stuff on the street and take the manuscripts... Or you can move everything but the manuscripts into a hotel as long as you actually keep the the manuscripts. Because I'm pretty sure that we do not want to be haunted by angry cats for the rest of this campaign. <laughs> I mean... I mean, what harm is it to get him a, an apartment to stay at for a while? I did not leave you with any of my money. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> yeah, Connor. Con Connor has money. He's got some money. Uh, okay. Uh, so the thing about searching a room for hidden artifacts is that if you are removing absolutely everything, you're going to find all the stuff. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to roll anything because you're just carrying things out one by one. 
Yeah. Um, you will find uh, hidden I- hidden away in the bookshelf is his Dutch manuscript uh, version of the uh, version of the Black Rites of Luva Karaf, which I'll is... leave him with his own version. Well, I mean, you're taking everything out of here. So yeah. the question is whether you dump it with his stuff or if you take it yourself. Uh, the version that he wrote down, I'll leave it with his stuff. Okay. Uh, and then after the others lift up the bed and carry it out, you see that he has dug a hole underneath the bed. And inside of a clay jar in that hole, he has stuck this actual ancient manuscripts. That's the one I'm taking. Okay. A hole in the ground. Well, he put it in a clay jar. He was trying to does hide the it. Clay, does the clay jar have traces of booze in it? Uh, you're not there. Unless you want to be John. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not there. <laughs> uh... There are, of course, cats watching all of this curiously. What do you think? Hunter's not at all worried. While all going through I'll this. smile and wave at the cats. <laughs> what? Yeah, so what you have here is a collection of, uh, of scrolls. Um, yeah, as far as I can tell, there's not really a whole lot else of value in here. Um, the furniture isn't especially nice. Uh, he's got one or two changes of clothing. Apart from that, it's a lot of empty liquor bottles. Uh-huh. Are you choosing to set him up somewhere else, or are you just taking all this out and throwing it in an alley? Uh, yeah, get him an apartment and tell, like figure out where we're going to take it, yeah. Give him an apartment. Uh, I'll leave that to you, and we can go and tell the shop owner that this is where he's set up. You can inform him however you like. Do not let him know that we were a part of this. <laughs> uh, tell him we paid for a certain amount of time, too. Like okay. A couple weeks worth. <laughs> is, this a, uh, is this a hotel, then? I don't know. A, a hotel might be easier to get get last minute. Yeah, especially foreigners don't generally show up and say, hey, I'm getting a, an apartment for somebody else. Right. So it might be yeah. a little trickier, but I'm not saying it's impossible. True, that is a good point. That'd be really tough to actually get. Ooh. What noise? Chat got me. Yeah. Okay. Uh. And so this isn't. <laughs> You're not being followed by a herd of cats down the street or anything, but it's just. Yeah. Now that you're paying attention to them, you know there are pretty much always some cats around in Egypt. But now that you're really paying attention, it does feel like every time, like everywhere you go, there's just a cat kind of sitting there, looking around the area, sometimes watching you. Um, what if... What? So we got cats following us now, right? Because yeah. I have the, like, uh, the ancient manuscript. Not, uh, not, not stalking you down the street, but just like everywhere you go, you see a cat. James just got done reading the manuscript too. Uh, somewhat. He managed to do an initial reading, but 
Mm. It's kind of it would take a lot longer. Yeah. Is it in English? No. It's in no. it's in hieroglyphics, and there is a flawed translation into Dutch. What languages do you speak, Travis? Or Victor? I, I kind of dropped apparently. What what languages does Victor know? English. Just English. Just English. Okay, you're not going to be reading too many manuscripts. Ouch. <laughs> well, that's just like that's just the nature of the beast. They're they're written in a lot of different languages, and hieroglyphics are pretty different from English. Um, Bertie. Yes. Are you really spending the entire day with this man, or are you at some point going to slip away? Well, I don't know how long it'll take these guys to move everything out, so I'll probably spend until like, <coughs> late afternoon, early evening. Okay. All right. So yeah, pretty pretty much all day. Uh, Do the cats stop following him around at some point? Well, you've got one on your shoulder. Okay. <laughs> so, no. Alright, awesome. Uh, then we can pick up in the late afternoon, early evening, when all of you have completed your tasks and can meet up again. Um, depending on how long it takes for Birdie to get back, I might, might start reading it again. Okay. That's fine. We're not going to make enough progress in an afternoon for it to do much, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, you can absolutely be reading it. Uh, to remind you, it is, it seems to be at least mostly uh, descriptions of the, uh, of, in particular of the rites of Bast. Okay. But there is a second half that you haven't really, um, you're going to have to dive into a little bit oh, that geez. seems to relate to Sebek. Ah. Who you would know as a crocodile god. Hmm. Not the crocodile god, a crocodile god. There's like four that I can think of right now. <laughs> <sighs> and it's up to like you cleared out his place, you stole all this stuff. <laughs> uh, I don't believe you ever told them where you're staying, so for the moment at least <laughs> We're are safe. Free and clear, except that they're you know, Birdie brought a cat with her. <laughs> yeah. Of course I do. And I walk in scratching little thing's chin mm -hmm. and saying, Do you want to come back to the States with me, darling? It is at some point going to jump down and make itself comfortable on the couch in the room where you are. <laughs> so, yeah, Connor, <laughs> Connor is just going to casually just, uh, so we're willingly letting, we're, we're, we're willingly letting in a spy now. I mean, it's hers. Yeah, not so much a spy now that we know who it belongs to. More like a watchful eye. Mm hmm And I mean, let's be honest, we're not planning on keeping this. We plan on returning it. 
And frankly, I don't know much about Best, but I can think of a lot worse gods than a cat god to be keeping an eye on us. We already have one. Let's mm -hmm. get let's get the number back down to one and hopefully zero. <laughs> Uh, you don't want to have two, two looking at us. Con Connor like shaking his head, no, <laughs> very serious, like like no. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't like it either, but. Well, consider this one hasn't tried to kill us yet. Yeah, the other one has. The other one that... threatened us, and we said no. That's what we're trying to prevent. Uh, by having them not have a spy sitting there with us, we might have a chance of, you know, it not want being able to kill us. Or we could also get help. Uh, you'll be nice to Miss Daisy May, alright? You named it. It's of course name. I named her. Uh, I like it. Look at her, she's precious. <sighs> birdie, ta birdie <laughs> taken on another stray. What, are you jealous? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Connor has a good laugh about that too, and he's. <laughs> yeah, but uh, what? How, uh, how much trouble did this last stray get you? He pointing at himself. Hmm. Uh, Bernie. Yes. When you came in. There was a message waiting for you at the front desk. Ooh, uh, okay. It is a copy of today's Cairo Bulletin. Uh, your your friend Nigel has circled an article for you. Ooh. Which I will show you now. Yeah, headline is Tragedy at the Ma Mosque of Ibn Tulun. Five of Ibn Tulun's most respected scholars have been confirmed dead after last night's collapse of the ceiling in their study room. The cause of these tragic deaths is being investigated. Still missing, but presumed dead, is Nesim Efti, the institution's oldest associate, the Nazir of Ibn Tulun, Ahmed al Dhabi, survived but was taken to hospital in a state of severe shock. The collapse occurred in the building adjacent to Ibn Tulun itself. The historic structure is thankfully undamaged. Oh dear. Alright. Uh, you will recall uh, in this message, there's going to be a message with the paper as well, that when you met with, uh, with Faraj Najjar, the uh, merchant who gave you some information on the cult in residence, he mentioned that the cult was interested in stealing an artifact that's held at this mosque. So uh, mm. when he told Nigel everything, and this came across his desk, it occurred to him it might be relevant. Uh, he's also going to say in his note that he went by to talk to Najar himself and found that the man has closed up shop and left town. Oh, lovely. I mean, with how his experience went with us, it makes sense. Entirely yes. understandable. His last shop was burnt down. Now he was almost killed in a mosque. It does seem he decided it was smarter to just leave. Okay, so I'll uh, 
present that to the others. I think they may have got their artifact. Who got an artifact now? I forgot about that. What kind of artifact did he... Were they after again? Najar did not know. Might be a good idea to go and check in and see if anything's missing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are we going to plan a heist? I mean, we kind of just did a heist. Well, you guys just yeah. did a heist. It was not a difficult heist, but it was one. Mm -hmm. Con Connor in shock now that he's realizing this was the smoothest heist he's ever been a part of. <laughs> <laughs> like, nobody got and shot was... at. It was with the willing consent of the landlord. <laughs> <laughs> Man, maybe we should start getting more con uh, consent next time we try to rob a place. <sighs> but I think that uh, a visit to this mosque might be in order next. And possibly, if he'll take visitors, a visit to the gentleman who's been taken to the hospital. So, um, I would think that you probably have time to do one or the other of those today. I mean... We could also, you know, split the party. <laughs> That's never ha gone wrong for us. <laughs> Ever. It also, I just, mean, we play fairly short games as it is, and I feel like that just decreases everybody's playing time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not telling I mean, you you can't. I'm just saying, logistically, it's not your best option. I was going to go and ask, should I stay behind and just go and read more on the uh, the manuscript while they go? Oh, so we're splitting the party three ways now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down with it. You know what? I'm going to start following cats around and just see where that leads me. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> my suggestion is for my, my suggestion is for James uh, Jean and either Theodore or Victor to stay here at the hotel so that you're not just sitting here reading alone mm -hmm. and the rest of us go uh, visit this mosque no, mm -hmm. we should visit the man in the hospital because, James, quite frankly, I would like to have you there with us to look at the mosque. Sure. You're good at these things. You're more well-read than any of the rest of us. Yeah. A hospital visit just requires a little charm and bedside manner. <laughs> Then I'll leave that to you guys. All right. I also see that there's a cat actually on the cow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that happens to be the one Birdie brought with her. That is Miss Daisy May. She yep. is precious and sweet. I'll put out a little bit of water for her before we head out. <laughs> okay. Be nice to her, alright? 
I'll look over and just say, well, do you want to read this with me? Uh, the cat will turn itself into a loaf. <laughs> Let's see. I'm trying to find a good token for this uh, for this dude. Uh, the one you're visiting in the hospital. Yeah. I gotta remember how many more days. Um. Do we know that we have? Before no, we don't know the big any... event. Yeah, before uh, they make any big moves. Uh. Well, you no, don't... the uh, the calendar stuff. That's right. That's what I meant. Okay. Uh, I believe what was on the calendar. Let me go there. It was something about the moon. Yeah. I remember that. So, uh, there, the rituals of the cult have seemed to be based around the cycles of the moon. Mm -hmm. Tonight is the night of the new moon. So if that holds like, if that holds true, then there's a good chance that they're doing some sort of right tonight. Then I will, uh, I'll make sure that I, that we all know to be careful. Oh, yeah. Why do you think I suggested you not stay here by yourself? Yeah. I mean, who knows? I would have a good chance to get a visit by a god. Uh, but what you got out of the chamber itself, the next matching planetary configuration is for January 14th of next year. Today okay. is April 23rd. Okay, gotcha. so we got a good bit of time. Theoretically. Theoretically, indeed. That is not the right scale. One hundred, apparently. Okay. Um, so you can head to The hospital. I will change the hospital to not require token vision so that everybody can see it. Bernie, what's your what's your plan here? Plan here is uh if he allows it for me to um, see if he's willing to tell us what happened. Yeah, but when you come to the front desk, what do you tell them? I'm going to explain to them that um, we are interested parties who are looking to um, investigate strange happenings in the area and only if he is willing to speak and if the nurses deem that uh, he is in such a state to speak with us we would very much like to speak with him about what occurred and what he remembers and the nurse is going to say, are you a relative? Distant, but... <laughs> uh, so she will 
You shall talk to another one of the nurses, and they'll go back to see if Mr. Aldahabi has any interest in speaking to you. Do you want to, like, do you have anything to say to try to catch his interest? Hmm. Well, we don't know what artifact it could have been that they would have stolen. No, I'm afraid you really don't. Everybody feel free to chime in with suggestions. What is our goal and objective here? My goal here is to see if this is another case of a demon coming down out of the sky and burning a place to the ground. Uh, as you it could, were. You could say something along the lines of uh, your cat misses you. Something involving a cat. To be clear... I don't know if he cares. Yeah, there's no about reason the to think that the, that the cat thing is connected to this. Who is this man? What I, is thought, this I thought it was because they stole from the cat temple. No, this this guy no. is a person from the mosque where oh, the cult okay. was looking to steal some kind of artifact from. Uh, the thing you that was stolen bring up, from the... um, Bring up the name of uh, the shop owner. Potentially. And that he wants to make sure that he's okay. Where are we? Is this is this just a This is, is a hospital. hospital. Uh, am I still do I still have some wounds on me? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, you're 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 pretty hurt. I think you're yeah, I think you, you've even got a few hit points missing. Um, question. Is this is the person we're trying to see a doctor? No. 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 <laughs> it's just a patient? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just gonna slam you my can. hands on the table. Yeah, you can get your I'll be right soon. back. Oh, you know what? That, Matter of fact, I still probably have. I, was um... I I still have my axe wound. As a matter of fact, I'm doing great. I... <laughs> well, I'm fine. I, yeah. I'd like to see the doctor. I'm all hurt. I don't know what these two are. These two are my. Are... Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. I'm just gonna with that. Okay. Yeah, and we down. ain't sorry, your what assistance. Your, what was your injury, uh, Bernie? I believe I took an axe to the shoulder. Okay, yeah. It seems entirely appropriate for the two of you to seek medical help with this. <laughs> That's fair. So yeah, you can you can just I did use my that good, angle oh. to get yourselves admitted. Did a good job, my best job at um, you know, making sure I treated that if I did. Yeah. Yeah, you would have done a very good job. So, um, yeah, we will have to... All right, changing the approach, I suppose. Yeah, so <laughs> there's going to be... You're going to spend a few hours being poked and prodded. Uh, you will have the... Listen, I'm not denigrating James here, but he's not actually a doctor. I'm not. <laughs> the somewhat amateur it's stitches quick. will be removed and replaced. It's quick patchworks that I'm good at. We'll go ahead and have each of you heal four hit points. Four? Four? Four. That's, like, that's the maximum roll. It feels appropriate for the doctor to just go ahead and do that to you. And then uh, you will be allowed to spend the night in the hospital. Uh, Connor, visiting hours aren't really a thing here, but um, you'll be allowed to come in and, you know, after, at the end and just say goodnight and everything. So uh, there are... Every bed isn't full, but there are quite a few 
people in here. Uh, some of them sleeping peacefully, some of them howling in pain uh, until the morphine kicks in. Not the most restful sleep. No. And you're going to get some weird dreams if you're on the pain medication. But you I'm always successful. down for weird dreams. <laughs> <laughs> you made your way into the hospital. Where are you going from here? Is it full? Not quite full, but there are quite a few other people in here. Are they giving us pain medication? Uh, they, they might. You've got a pretty nasty shoulder wound. You've been ignoring it for a while. You can refuse it if you want to. They'll come by with a needle for you. I'm going to do something silly. I'm going to let them drug me, and then I'm going to start uh, ranting and raving. <laughs> about some of the weird crap we've seen to see if it piques anybody's interest. <laughs> okay. Just... Uh... Why would they have had tentacles? Why, why did the tentacles have faces on them? That doesn't make any sense. Demons flying out of the sky and <laughs> Um I'm a little zoned out. I won't lie. I'm still here. What? We're we just chilling it back here now? Pretty much. You know... Well Birdie's high. Yeah. Birdie's high. <laughs> Alright, I'm, I'm gonna let Birdie Birdie be Birdie. Why, why we look? At, why we want to talk to this man? I don't know what's really happening. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trying to catch up. So when, when you had previously met with Faraj Najjar, and he, you got all the information from him about the cult. He mentioned that the cult wanted to steal an artifact from a mosque at Ibn Tulu. Okay. Um, I don't remember if you were here when they met with the newspaperman. But Bertie nope. ended up telling him everything that you went through. And so today, when you arrive back at the I hotel... I believe he was there for there the was, newspaper. There was a message waiting for you. Uh, there was a copy of the newspaper with an article circled about how there had been damage. There, like a ceiling had collapsed at a building next to this mosque. And uh, several people are dead... At least one is missing, and one official from the mosque has been taken to the local hospital to uh, in a state of shock. Which is why I'm talking about demons coming out of the sky and burning places down. And who names their cult Bloody Tongue, after all? That is the dumbest name at least give it something a little with a little bit more oomph to it so bloody tongue that just sounds like <sighs> i don't even know what that sounds like that just sounds gross and i'm playing up being more high than i actually am okay but you're also pretty high let me see i am <laughs> Go ahead, Travis. What were you trying to do? That man right there, he... He's, a. Uh... I mean, it's obvious to you because I only have one token on the screen. But oh, Victor okay. has no idea. Yeah. There's people Victor in has no idea. several yeah. other beds. Is Victor going to take drugs or not? Will you refuse the pain medication? Are you telling me I haven't been on morphine before? No, I'm asking you if you're going to take it or not. <laughs> I oh no he he'll take morphine but like you know he's a soldier he's already had morphine okay that is, you don't get that to doesn't be, that does you don't become that doesn't immunize, immunize you <laughs> <laughs> I love that you think you can though 
<laughs> yeah, from like... experience, you do not become immune to morphine. <laughs> it always packs a punch. Uh, <laughs> then no, I won't. I, I don't get. You know what? Screw it. Yeah, why not? Uh... I've, I've never had morphine. Okay. So the uh, the uh, the Berlin supplement has rules for drugs. Uh. Right, am I gonna be rolling con? Yes. Well, no, actually. Um, while you're under it, a bonus die is applied to all sanity rolls. Insanity effects that would be suffered are negated for the duration, and you ignore all pain-related con rolls. Uh, Yay! On the other hand, you have nausea, constipation, and immobility for 1d3 hours. So go ahead and both of you roll a d3. One, D, three. And then each of you make a luck roll. Wait, forward slash. Whee! I got three. <laughs> we both got okay. three hours, baby. So I'll it completely for about three hours. It's going to be probably about midnight before you're able to. Before you come back to yourselves a bit. And then luck. Then luck. Let's go. Yay. Which we have not actually rolled luck for today. Okay. Neither one of you suffers any ill effects from receiving morphine. Yay. Mobility. There's ill effects from morphine? You can lose hit points for it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Morphine is bad for you. Hey, 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 Fluffy, you know drugs are bad, right? <laughs> Some games I get bonuses. I, I mean... Well, yeah, you uh, cannot... Well. You cannot pass out from taking pain right now. <sighs> uh, so it's going to be... You're going to babble incoherently for about three hours. Although, yeah, you can direct it to be about specifically crazy cult stuff uh connor are you staying with them like are you sitting with them through this whole trip i think you might be muted buddy yeah well my, uh what i said at the start of this connor is really out of his element in this <coughs> country he doesn't speak the language uh well, a lot you of you know the, we have a tour guide, right? A lot of the medical professionals Ew. are actually British. Oh, colonization. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, officially, this is not a British colony anymore, but in practice, an awful lot of the people in charge are still British. Yep, which is pretty typical for um, yes. not British colonies. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, if you want to just sit here with them, that's fine, Connor. You can take a nap, or you can just guard them. Yeah, he's just guarding them, taking a nap, you know. Being told <laughs> to... multiple times not to smoke. Uh, oh, no, smoking's to fine. Rant and rave and be high. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, so Connor's just, you know, just relaxing and smoking, and, you know. <laughs> Bernie, let's have let's have one more luck roll from you since you're trying to since you're trying to in a drug induced state just kind of rave and catch the attention of somebody else in the room. Just talking about everything. Because hey, guess what? I'm high right now, which means nothing I say is real. <laughs> but also no filter. <laughs> okay. That's a, uh, yeah, that's a hard success. 
So you're going to at some point talk about Natakris and how her mummy yeah. is. Yeah. And Connor, you're a very observant guy and you're sitting here guarding them. You're going to notice that that is about the point when a man down the way becomes more alert and starts watching you. Yeah, so he's just going to just casually uh, be, you know, eyeing the guy that's watching him. Mm -hmm. uh, when he sees you looking directly at him, it's like very suspiciously just pointedly not paying attention to you. <laughs> he wasn't spying on you at all. I'm uh, going to start humming the um, the hymn. The ancient hymn that's been forgotten for millennia? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Just just for added effect. For, she's high, okay? Mm -hmm. Not all of her decisions are going to make sense. No, that's fine. I'm just... <laughs> just you know what? <laughs> is this the same hymn we heard in the pyramid, right? Is, is that the one you're talking about? Uh, Well, Birdie heard it. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I heard it, and then I reproduced it for you guys. Yeah. Which then I refined it. Yeah. You know what? I'll join in on this. All right. Um, I'm sure that you both, like in your morphine-induced stupor, you both make a lovely sound. <laughs> Despite her name, Birdie does not have a good singing voice. <laughs> Connor, this is your opportunity while they're out of it to um, to do some personal interaction of your own if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. After after the guy like looks away the second time, Connor's just going to get up mm -hmm. and just walk clo uh, walk over to the guy and like flick his cigarette and say, "So." <laughs> Who do you work for? <laughs> <laughs> Pointedly. Um, yeah, and he'll say, I, I work for Allah. <sighs> you know, I've run into a lot of people that have worked for God or a God or something like that. Did God tell you to come and watch us today? <laughs> no, I was injured when there was a uh, when a building collapsed at the uh, at the medical facility I run. Oh yeah, uh, Con uh, Connor takes a drag off of his cigarette. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I was in here before you arrived. <laughs> Connor has that <laughs> laugh. Sorry, it's it's been a rough week. <laughs> he, he he produces a flask and a, and a cigarette, and he kind of offers I both either or to him. Yeah, no, he does not partake. <laughs> Because yeah, Allah. Yes. <laughs> they don't do either. Yeah, but Ugh. that was that was little that that was legitimately a test, by the way. Okay. That <laughs> <laughs> is very clever today. <laughs> so, oh yes, no, you uh... got me. <laughs> No. God. Wait, 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 no, no, no. Does, how, how does he take that? Is uh, he offended? Well, no, it's just like... No, no, no. Not exactly I, offended, I'm sorry, I'm but it's inappropriate to offer it to him, and also you're in a hospital. So it's more like shock than, than really offended. Uh... Sorry. We've been... We've ran into some people that... Uh claimed to be uh, followers of God, but were acting in a not godly manner. Yes, I'm Two of my friends are injured. Well, I, I hope for their recovery. Any, anybody you know that's injured in here? 
I think I will be free to go home in the morning. Um, several of my colleagues are not so fortunate. Yeah, how, lo uh, how long ago was this? I didn't hear anything about it. This was last night. That is very strange. Well, the buildings are very old. Mm. Well, you made it out seemingly unscathed. Well, i i had to be I had to be dug out of the rubble. But no, I don't have any major injuries. I was very fortunate. Goodness, you probably had a... You're having a worse week than me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> For being paranoid earlier. No, it's quite alright. It sounds like you had a very rough week as well. Um. Queen Trakas can kiss my ass! <laughs> In the background, <laughs> Cotter, uh, Cotter just grinning and says, "That's that's one of my friends." You couldn't tell. <laughs> she seems very angry at ancient history. <laughs> Are you Taurus? Come to look at the old artifacts. Uh, we're uh we're we're visiting and checking on artifacts and. We're, we're, we're doing some uh, research, actually, on the uh, Carlisle Expedition, if you heard of it. Mm. Uh, most of us are historians. I'm not, if you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I think I read about that in the papers. That was a few years ago. Uh, were they not all lost? We actually heard that there is a uh, survivor, actually, oh. and we're trying to track them down. Um, <clears throat> track them down and get their story out of it and see if we can recover some of the lost artifacts uh, from that expedition. <clears throat> well... Yeah. That, that it seems a worthy goal. Where is is Natakris connected to the artifacts you seek? Do I recognize that name? Well, that's the one Birdie is yelling. That is the name oh. of the mummy that went missing as well. <laughs> we we believe so. The same group that attacked the Carlisle expedition was also involved in the theft of that uh, of the mummy <clears throat> and what do you know about this group how much am I going to let on yeah that's what I'm asking you yeah, how much am I going to let on? I'm going to give, like, a very gist that they are vaguely Egyptian, uh, believing in God belief system, but it's clearly a cult that is to... often violent. Like, I'm giving ba vague overheads. Are you going not... to name the God? Uh oh I think, um, I think I crashed there. Uh, I, can, I can hear you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. Are you going to tell him the name of the god? Um, Why not? Balls out. Yeah, you know, let's invoke a god. Let's invoke a god's name at, at a hospital, you know, while people are wounded and drugged. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Are there any cats uh, I, around? He is going to pronounce the, pronounce the uh, god's name wrong. Though, which one? And 
either related, I believe it's related to Nyar Lethotep. And uh, he's going. When you say that, he's going to grab your hand. He says, "Don't say that name aloud." I, I, you know, I get that a lot. You should listen. <laughs> I'll take your advice, friend. We don't speak of Zip the lips. And so, have you heard of this one? Yes. There. This one's particular followers are rabid. I think I think it would be wise for you to take your friends and go home. Yeah. Am I able to hear any of this? Uh, you are high. <laughs> that doesn't mean I can't hear it. Okay, that sounded me... like a vague threat. Uh, Can he has have disadvantage because of my loud ranting? <laughs> Make a listen roll with disadvantage, at least because you're drugged. <laughs> hey Terry, are you glad you're not here right now? <laughs> the uh, the scroll is more Terry. interesting. Aww. That's mad crazy. That actually upsets me. <laughs> you would have I had mean, a you five. got five luck. Oh, why not? <laughs> hey! <laughs> then, yes, you will hear, like, your finely honed senses are going to hear what you interpret as a threat. It's not, but you interpret it that way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I... I just wanted to hear it, honestly. Yeah, we're just... I'm gonna come over stumbling. Did I hear Neil Lovett and you should go home? I think I think that's fair, right? Well, you rolled. Cause... Listen, yes. So okay, yeah, okay. I'm gonna stumble over. Hey, you working for that guy? Uh, Con Connor is like slightly shaking his no head, no looking at you, like. No. <laughs> what are you trying to accomplish? Like, what uh, what role do you want to make when you come? Up uh, I am I am presenting myself as uh, an enemy to uh, what has just been said, and that like I feel like he he is being aggressive. If I have to roll intimidation, like I'll roll that too. Intimidation is my first thought, but it sounds like <laughs> it sounds like um, if he's not. Like it sounds like you're presenting yourself as aggressively against No right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Then uh I would accept a charm. Okay. Either charm or intimidate, either way. Okay. Uh, How do I push rolls? Because like I we it's always there and it taunts me. Well this And we be... don't use it much. This would be you say it. It doesn't. It does not have the desired effect, and you do something else. It could just be getting more threatening with your voice. It could be actually doing something to him, but you have to actually push harder. So, uh, you know how there's a, there's a like a tray right right over there. You know, sure. maybe some. It, it, medical tray. And I see some hesitation, like he's not sure what I'm about, and I'm just gonna swipe at it. Okay, you're gonna make a big noise, huh? Yep. Damn, that's wild. Alright, so, uh, orderlies are going to come, and they're going to grab you. Uh, and they're going to... <laughs> you are too drugged to really fight back. They're uh, going to drag you back to your bed. Connor, do you I, while, 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 while they're dragging it back, make sure to use the big straps. <laughs> 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 and, and then continue back to the, the polite discussion. <laughs> Birdie, Birdie's just snickery. <laughs> and Victor. <laughs> Victor, you do get strapped down to the bed now. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, forgive my companion. Uh, he actually got the worst of it. 
running into those. I don't have a nice word for them, so I'm going to remain silent. <laughs> there are no nice words for them. They have killed five of my friends. One of my friends is missing. I don't know what happened to him. And I am all but certain that they stole something that we were guarding. That's uh, what, what we needed. What, what temple? Or what, what, what? Did he say temple? Uh, I don't think he directly said that, no. But you can... Oh. You can just bring up that it's a mosque. Uh, you're, the, the building that you were talking about didn't have to be, happen to have been a mosque, right? Yes. We heard of a relic being taken from one not too long ago. And we've been actually trying to find where it's gone. I didn't hear about the building collapsing. We have been guarding this one for some time. So whatever you're looking for cannot be the same thing. Yeah. Nah, we're we're more we were more we heard it in the Great Vine because once you're interested in any relic, you're told of hundreds of other relics instead. Well, we, we fought as hard as we could, but they called down demons from the sky. I, I, I heard something about that with a, uh, a merchant having something similar happening to them. I don't know this merchant. But they are, there are too many of them. There are, there are too many of them in this city. Uh, and I am very afraid of what they intend to do with the... Uh... He pauses, he looks you in the eyes and he says, with the artifact. I think that people, people who do not have a connection to Egypt would be well served to leave Egypt. Cough, cough. I'd argue we do have a connection because uh, two of us are unwillingly <laughs> supposed to work for this god, and one of us was a mouthpiece for him. I'm not. I'm not telling him that at all. Yeah. That yeah. I that I was forced to put on the mask. Nah. -uh. Well, mm -hmm. me? that's a different god. That is a different god. That's the one from Kenya. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, do you want to find out more information about the artifact that's been stolen, or are you satisfied with what you learned? Uh, yes. I would like to learn as much as I can about it without irritating uh, the man. And So, uh, mm. what worst tactic... case scenario, uh, worst case scenario, I will, like, reference, you know, cats, bast. That I've heard some things about Bast and stuff like that. Nothing, that nothing nothing stabbing. Like that, it, that is yeah, nothing. That's that that is not related to this one at all. That's okay. a complete yeah. that's 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 a side quest. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> This man is you know god. Yeah. I'm does just not worship the cat goddess. Yeah, I'm just brushing over various things, seeing what this man knows. Because right now he's a valid uh, source of information. That's up front and for you know forthcoming with his his, his information. So I'm tapping this well. <laughs> well, um, 
Let's see. At this point, honestly, he is pretty desperate. He kind of feels like everything is lost. Uh, and if you are going to make it clear that you don't intend to leave and you want to try to stop what's coming. Yeah. I mean, if I don't, if I don't stop what's coming, I don't get my paycheck. Kind of attitude from Connor. <laughs> okay, well, that is not something he respects, but... <laughs> At all. Like, look, 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 I started it by interrogating him like he's a cultist. We weren't going to be the best of friends. <laughs> Uh, then he will eventually tell you that, yes, they stole, they have been guarding the girdle of Natakris. Uh, it has been stolen from the temple. He doesn't know exactly what right the cult can perform with it. But, uh, he, he is pretty sure that they're going to resurrect an ancient power. Something uh, dark from Egypt's past that should have been buried forever. Dark Pharaoh. Not dark, Black Pharaoh. Hmm. Okay. Do we have any idea what the what the name of this being is? Uh well, uh He says that uh he doesn't know He does not have knowledge of what the right is. But he believes that the girdle can be used to resurrect Natakris herself. Okay. And and because I you know, outsider and everything, that would be incredibly bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> like complete outsider here. That would be very bad. Cool. Yes, she is so. a servant of the god whose name we don't speak. Understood. Okay. And a priestess. So we're we're, we're talking we're talking lesser deity stuff here. Evil deity stuff. Yes. Of course. Um, do do uh, do, do you have a way of? Uh, do you know what? Uh, what does it look like? <laughs> Sorry. No problem. Uh, let's see. He actually can give you a description of it. Um, mm -hmm. It's probably. Let's see. Uh, there we go. It's a narrow band of linked golden chain with a large ruby marking the clasp. So it's a belt that's a golden chain. And I think this is a good time to let the museum scene end. Uh, back at the hotel, let's say, James, let's say this is your room. You'll have stayed up fairly late, uh, working on the manuscript, correct? Sorry, something's going around with your mic. You got real quiet. Can you hear me now? Yep. So you stayed up working on the manuscript, right? Yep. So uh, around, let's say, probably around midnight you go to bed. 
Alright. And while you're lying there, uh, while you're lying there in the dark, trying to, uh, trying to fall asleep, trying not to let the visions of the things you've been reading keep twisting through your mind, you're going to glance over at the open window out at the moonlit night, and you're going to see a black panther crawling into the window of your room. Connor, I'm just slowly pulling a gun out of his waistband. <laughs> no, no, this is just James. You're not this there. This is just James. <laughs> oh, that's good. <sighs> Let's see, is it a cat? I'm going to assume that it's, uh... Oh, it's a big cat. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a big cat. It's a big cat. Uh, I'll assume that this is a, uh... Either a messenger or a uh, a threat, basically, to uh, return. Or was stolen. And I'll just uh, look over and say, "Well, good evening." Uh, the cat does kind not of... respond. <laughs> just kind of continues to slink into the room. Don't know what I was expecting. No, go ahead. You can keep going. I take it you want what was taken? All right. At that, the Panther will pause. And I think that's a good time to leave it for the week. <laughs> pause. Excellent. Yes. Big pause. It'll it'll be making biscuits all week waiting for us to come back. Excellent. Okay. Quick question. Yes. Quick question. What kind of Panther is this? Egyptian. A pink panther. Oh, a leopard, a lion, what? <laughs> it is a pulp panther. Okay. The amalgamation of all of the panthers. Yeah. Hey, awesome. Whatever big black cat goes through your mind, that's what this is. It's Bagheera. Hey. He was a leopard, I believe. Because fun fact, kids, a uh, panther is not a single cat. Panther describes all big cats. Yep. <laughs> I believe that does depend on where you are, though, because it's a uh, it's a regional term, and in different it places it can mean a specific cat. But like in North America, panther. There, there are no panthers in North America because there are no, there are no cats with panther either. Well, in, a in puma. They're not, they're not panthera. They're technically the largest small cat. <laughs> but this is where the. It's not worth doing this on air. <laughs> <laughs> biology is, uh, versus dialect this is exactly the wrong conversation to be having when a gig gigantic cat creeps through your window <laughs> you can't be real because panthers are these kids <laughs> so anything to say before we say goodnight I was wrong there is one big cat in North America Jaguar <laughs> um, Good night. If a giant cat crawls through your window, the first thing you should probably do is uh, not say hello. I was expecting you. Not move. Uh, well, if it pauses when you say that, maybe it worked. <laughs> um, Good night, everybody. Good night, y'all. Yeah, Good night. <laughs>